my name is John Hodgson and I'm one of the illustrators working on The One Ring for Cubicle 7 and Sophisticated Games. It's a new Middle Earth role playing game coming out summer 2011. This video documents some of the opening processes involved in painting a Misty Mountains goblin for the game. So we start out very traditionally pencil, paper, pencil sketch, just to design the goblin. There's, there's a whole bunch of thumbnails that went into this process before we got to this final sketch in my sketchbook. And then that's scanned and taken into Photoshop. And in Photoshop, I adjust the levels of the sketch to make it a bit more of a higher contrast image to work on, as you can see, and knock back that yellowiness from the sketchbook. Um, and what I've done with these, these are all images that float on a clear layer, which helps us in layout and, and other uses for the images. They're not scenic paintings. So what I do is on, on a new layer in Photoshop, I just paint on uh, using a multiply layer so we can see through it. Um, I just paint the silhouette of the creature. Now there's a lot of different ways you could do what I'm doing with this process using masks and, and, and adjustment layers and so on. But I found in general this slightly more simplistic way of doing it has, has worked out better for me because it's it's slightly less specific than using um, more, more advanced Photoshop techniques and, and thus it's a bit more versatile. So I just paint over the whole thing, the, the area that I want to be cut out and that gives me a nice silhouette that I can use to, to make selections with, cut out the image from the background, get him floating on a layer. It also means I can do what I'm doing, what you're seeing at the moment, which is use textures very quickly, cut them out to the right shape, change them to multiply layers, it starts to break up the drawing. I'm adjusting the, the levels there on the, on the multiply layer to get something I want, get the right key to the to the texture and then a bit of clean up this was one of the first ones I did so in my process now I've done several a whole bunch of different monsters um, is, is speeded up I'm kind of working on the technique as I go here so it's a new multiply layer and just putting in some very basic tone just helps the image read as well as much as anything at this point thinking about where the light's falling and which areas I want light and dark So this is an important bit where we're seeing um, some colour coming in, those blues. I wanted a very tight palette for this guy. I kind of want his clothing, his weapons, his flesh, all to be uh, quite similar in colour. That makes sense to me for, for the goblins or orcs, same difference. Um, and the whole design concept for these guys was was very important to me that, that Orcs and goblins within Middle Earth are really quite terrifying creatures. They're not the comedy creatures we, we see in a lot of um, different kinds of fantasy. They're very old often. A lot of things are old within Tolkien, but the orcs in particular can be can be hundreds and hundreds of years old, if not thousands of years old, if they're an original. Um, and they're really evil, you know, they're proper evil. They're not just comedic comedic idiots, you know, who sort of blunderingly commit murder. These are very... Um, spiteful creatures, malicious, malignant, I think was a word that I used quite a lot um, when we were talking about it. Um, I just wanted them to be really horrible and frightening. I remember as a child watching the um, Bakshi animation and the rotoscope dorks really terrified me. And I didn't necessarily want to go for that exact look, but I wanted them to have that feel, to evoke that feeling of horror and try and almost reclaim the orc, you know, as, as something horrific. You know, these are beings created by torture um, to be soldiers in an army of, of evil, you know. Okay, so here I've just built, I'm building a background in, something to paint on, because there's nothing worse than painting on to, to pure white. And a bit of clean up there, and just getting rid of any lingering bits of uh, the white from the sketchbook. I found um, through experience when you're creating imagery that is designed to float on a layer, 
it's well worth getting all the edges sorted out at first, you know, before you begin painting. And then you can lock the transparency and not go over the edges in air quotes. It just helps things a great deal. So that's finished in Photoshop. Weak lemon drink. And then into my favorite art program, Art Rage. Uh, yeah, imported there into, into my painting software of choice. And we start painting. I've got a good solid draw in there so I can go in with quite a, a small brush. Often I do a lot more kind of sculpting with the, with the oils in Art Rage, but in this instance I can go in with quite a small brush and start just rendering those forms in paint, starting adding detail, working the, the colour, and it's just a case of building things up. I generally work from a quite a dark mid-tone towards lighter colours. That's my general sort of uh, painting philosophy, if you like. I start with it with a fairly deep mid-tone and, and push towards the lights and, and the darks, either side of that. Um, quite traditional as well, using quite a lot of sepia. Or close to sepia, kind of underpainting. I think it's a, a, it's a solid color as a, as a base that you can push in different directions. The great thing about brown is it's got all, all your three primary colors. So you can push, push it in different directions and keep quite a, a, a tight, harmonious kind of palette. I do an awful lot of colour picking from the canvas. And you can see my brush is changing colour there as I go. And I'm not, not often going over to the colour picker. This is all coming from my underpainting. Something I really like in Art Range is it does throw up colour. The way colour mixes on the canvas can, can throw up some new colours, which is really suits me. I know some people find that um, problematic, but it really, really helps me. And that's about all I managed to record of the painting process of this one. All the recordings I made of my process during this project were kind of made as and when, and sometimes things have to be moved along a little bit faster without the luxury of having the time to um, record what I was doing. So I'm afraid that's as much as you get of, of that process, though I think um, it, it gives you a pretty good basic understanding of what I'm doing, hopefully. There's not a lot of changes beyond what you see there. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, I look forward to speaking to you again when another painting is uh, released. Bye now.